themselves and bleeding and they can't get bail to respond. But when he says, maybe he's on a journey. In the original Hebrew, do you know what that means? It means maybe he's out relieving himself. <laughs> so don't think prophets of God can't use some colorful language to get their points across. <laughs> so if I ever do anything, just remember it could be biblical basis in the original Hebrew. <laughs> but you can come ask me about it privately. You might have the spiritual gift of correction operating through you. Or the spiritual gift of accountability, keeping David accountable. And if I ever go over the line, you can say, let me help pull you back a little. Let me have a gift of restoration in your life. Ye, if one is overtaken in a fault, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of meekness, lest you too be tempted. So spiritual gift of restoration. Question. Peacemaking gift. What happens if a person with a peacemaking gift goes in ahead of the person with the peacekeeping gift? Peacekeepers, like we got to go to war to keep the peace. We might have to take out some people. We've got to send the jackals in, kill so-and-so, so-and-so. We've got to get a military point. They do their job, right? And there's a place for them. They bear not the sword in vain, Romans 13 says. However, if somebody walks in and says, could I speak with both presidents or the king of this country along with it? And he speaks a word and both parties are like, oh, we could agree to do that. Oh, there was a cultural difference. I didn't know. Oh, yeah, we could trade oil for, for technology. Oh, no, that would help both of our countries. Oh, you mean you don't really want to kill us? Well, no. We don't really want to kill you either. Oh, we didn't know that. And one person with the peacemaking gift comes in and puts things in a different perspective. Everybody puts their swords down. And they say, let's go ahead and shake hands. And let's do commerce together. In fact, we've got some things we haven't told you about that could really help your people. You would do that for us? And now the peacemakers have just nullified the need for the immediate peacekeepers. Mm -hmm. So do you see why the peacemaking gift is one of the most powerful spiritual gifts mm -hmm. in the Bible? When I was in prison, I had staff members come to me one time. David, we need to talk to you. Well, I had a chaplain call me in. So there's, you know, there's, there's, there's weapons on the compound. They've got all kinds of shanks buried out on the yard. The, the uh, Cerdanos are getting ready to go up against the Crips, the Mexicans and the Blacks. And it's going to be a bloodbath. And we need to find those shanks. And can you help us? And I said, no. <laughs> I said, no. I said, that's not the type of guy I am. I, I don't do that. I said, and quite candidly, I said, uh, you've known me long enough to know that's not what I do. I don't, I don't give information to the cops. I said, but what I do have is I have a peacemaking gift. I can go out and communicate something to them from the cop side because they respect me because I'm not a rat in prison. And they'll know what I'm communicating is accurate and nobody will have to get hurt. And I said, pray for me while I go do this. <laughs> yeah. And he apologized to me. He says, you know what? I've never asked you for information before. I don't know what got into me. He says, I, I missed it. So I apologize. He says, I've got other inmates that love to give me information. I know you're not that wet. Okay. So, and, and by the way, everybody has their place. I didn't have the spiritual gift of tattletelling and snitching. Amen. Okay. Some people are, have a double portion of that. And so I just I pray they're operating in the spirit of God when they do it and not the spirit of save me and hurt others. Mm -hmm. And by the way, let me say this. I think if you're in a bank and you're a bank teller and you get robbed, it is your duty to tell what you saw. And I'm just going to leave it at that. That's, that's proper. If you're out doing some things and you get yourself all hemmed up and you, they don't know about the other person, you're like, well, I'll just trade you know, three or four of them for myself. And I think that's selfishness. Right. Mm -hmm. 
And I, I, don't, I don't know that God blesses that. I do believe that if you just want to come clean and you want to get things clean and you don't have a prior agenda or a selfish motive, I think God will honor that as well. So there, I've just said some crazy stuff on, on video and CD, haven't I? I probably offended three different groups of people effectively. <laughs> Let each man be convinced in his own mind, you know. And, uh, you know, I did 22 years. Well, 19 years, six months and a week, and I did more time than all my co-defendants combined. They had a little different calling than I did, evidently. Mm. And uh, every time I got indicted again, more of them showed up on the witness list, and I, more or less defendants showed up, and it got the point where I was the only one left. Anyway, the point is, <laughs> you've got to identify your gift. You have to discover it, distinguish it, and then go use it, deploy it. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are handing these out tonight, mm -hmm. so that you can go home Take the survey, and here's an example question. And by the way, this is the Wagner Modified House Questionnaire. Of all the spiritual surveys I've taken over the years, and I've taken many, I find this one, for me, to be most complete. Others that I've taken have been good, but they've been, they lean toward like one area of gifting. Like one will all be about the power gifts. Speaking in tongues and healing the sick and evangelism and casting out devils. And you'll take that and you'll be like, oh, wow, look at all the gifts I've got. Somebody else will take that. They'll be like, I don't have any gifts. Then another group will dumb down the gifts of the Spirit, the manifestation gifts. And they'll be like, well, you have the gift of helps or administration. They won't talk about tongues, healing, prophecy, evangelism, exorcism. And you're like, well, this is pretty lame. So this one actually talks about it all. And there's 25 gifts mentioned. And I think it's the most balanced that I've, I've, I've taken over the years. And I've probably taken, you know, maybe eight different spiritual gift surveys over my 22 years in Christ. And I also have to share this. If I take a spiritual gift survey today... My gifts won't dramatically change, but what will happen is there will be a stronger emphasis on one gift versus another. Like back in 1998 to 2001, I was at a facility. It was a revival that went on there. And every time I turned around, God had divinely set up an opportunity to heal the sick, to prophesy, to cast out devils, and to win people to Christ. I took a spiritual gift survey, and I was like scoring off the charts on those areas. I moved to the next facility. I took the same survey. That's not what God was doing there. I was having to teach there. My teaching gift was off the charts, and I found that my evangelism gift, my gift for casting out demons was lower. And I'm thinking, well, I'd lose my gift? No, that's just not what God was doing primarily at that location. Does that make sense? So there's no competition in this thing. This is not a spiritual gifts test. Say, this is not a test. This is not a test. See, a test you can fail or you can pass. This is a questionnaire or a survey. Why? So we can discover, distinguish, and then activate and deploy what's already been placed within us. Now before we go further, I also want to share this. Romans 1.11 that says, I long to see you that I might impart to you some spiritual gift. Spiritual gifts can be imparted. You can get them through the laying on of hands. This last week we had an evangelist in town and there were gifts imparted to people. The week before I think we had a service on the four different types of tongues and people started speaking in other tongues, some for the first time, some were refilled. Prior to that, Prophet Phil Rich was in town, and he was speaking on some things, and some things were imparted. The point is, we've got gifts resonant within us that have been imparted to us. It's kind of discover them, distinguish them, and then deploy them. Why? Because there's a hurting world out there in need of the gifts of God. And when you give someone a gift, it gets their attention, doesn't it?